everything is down. Yep, there are a lot of statistics in the Phoenix real estate market right now that is just pointing down. And so we're going to talk about that today. And let's start with talking about what went on in the economy last week, what we can expect this week, as we always do. Thanks for joining me. I'm Caitlin McKegg. I'm a real estate broker here in Phoenix. And welcome if this is your first time. Uh, last week, I mentioned we were going to be seeing the jobs numbers come out. And we had two different reports come out, one from ADP and then one from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, ADP came out first. Uh, 324,000 jobs added in July, well above expectations. Um, that was not good news. And I think that was on Thursday when that came out. Not good news because the, the Fed is trying to slow down the economy and showing a strong job market just shows that they're, what they're doing isn't working. Um, and it's also bad news for mortgage rates. So that was the reaction to that. But then on Friday, we got the report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which was uh, payroll growth totaled 187,000 lower than expected. I think the expectation was like 200,000 or something like that. Uh, yep, 200,000. And so seeing something uh, lower than expected uh, was a really good thing for the economy. It was good news and ultimately good news for mortgage rates. So that's why we track all of this stuff because it helps us understand what's going to happen in the mortgage world. Um, unfortunately, when you look at mortgage rates, you kind of have to root against the economy because anything that is uh, showing recessionary signs for the economy and that kind of thing is going to make mortgage rates go down uh, versus strength in the economy is usually going to increase mortgage rates. Um, and that's generally speaking, but you know, just something you can kind of consider as you're hearing about what's going on out there. So that was the jobs report. This week, we are going to get the CPI data, which is the inflation, the um, the inflation numbers that the Fed is going to look at uh, to determine their future rate increases. They actually don't meet this month, so it's not going to be until September that they'll meet again and discuss um, and determine what they want to do with future rate hikes. Um, but uh, that's what we need to look out for this week. We're going to get that CPI data. Um, it's projected to rise 0.2% in July for a second month after excluding food and energy costs, making the smallest back-to-back -back gains in two and a half years. Economists and Fed officials view this core measure as a better indicator of underlying inflation. Um, compared with a year earlier, um, the forecast to rise 4.8% according to the median projection in a Bloomberg uh, survey of uh, economists ahead of Thursday's report. Um, so the expectation is that it's going to um, rise just a smaller amount again as compared to what it's been doing in the past. Um, we'll see if that happens. If so, that's you know good news. Uh, we don't want to see it coming up uh, higher than what was expected. Um, but again, these are things to watch because they could change uh, what happens with mortgage rates this week. Um, and then this, I just wanted to share the Fed's um, Bowman says more U.S. rate hikes will likely be needed. So um, she's Governor Michelle Bowman um, and she is located in, I um, can't remember which state. Uh, I thought they had that here. But anyway, her opinion is that uh, they she supported the last quarter point increase. Um, and given still high inflation, strong consumer spending, a rebound in the housing market, um, she is expecting that they will continue with rate increases. So not a surprise because that's kind of what they've said, but we'll see what happens with the latest data this week. And then, um, you know, by the time that they meet in September, what that looks like. So all this stuff we've been talking about relates to mortgage rates. Um, and I really love sharing these articles from Mortgage News Daily because they're a great, um, uh, you know, pulse on what's going on with rates. Um, again, everything really depends on your situation financially, credit scores, what kind of loan you're getting, all of that stuff. Um, but generally speaking, it gives you just an idea of rates going up or down um, throughout the week. So on Friday, with that positive news from the BLS jobs report, rates uh, went down a little bit. 
Uh, however, they are still near 23 year highs. Um, and that basically what happened last week, according to this article, is that um, the f rate uh, decrease on Friday kind of just took us back to where we were at on Monday. So there wasn't a huge change in rates last week. Um, but we'll see, you know, what happens this week with the CPI data. Um, this is where they say, despite Friday's recovery, current rate levels are still uncomfortably close to long-term highs. Mortgage rates only made it back to Monday's levels. In order to get meaningfully into the sixes, we need more data that comes in cooler than the markets expect. So rooting for that CPI data to uh, be positive or, you know, showing a decrease um, that will help rates this week. So if you're in the market to buy or you're under contract thinking about locking your rate, keep your ears open for uh, this news this week and how that might affect rates. All right. If any of this information is helpful to you guys, make sure you subscribe. Let's talk about Phoenix. Um, this is the CMI. If you're new here, this is the Cromford Market Index. I am a subscriber to the Cromford Report, and this is really their leading indicator on where the market is headed. It tells us supply and demand factors in the market and whether or not we're in a seller's market or a buyer's market. And so anything over 110 is considered a seller's market, and we're at 161.2 this week. Um, this is pretty similar to where we've been the last few weeks. There just hasn't been a whole lot of movement. The demand index is low, so 100 being normal, our demand is about 23% below normal. Supply index, also low, even lower than demand, uh, with 100 being that kind of normal range. Um, supply is at about 52% below normal. Supply has not been rising, and demand has kind of been diminishing, and Overall, what we're seeing is a very low number of transactions taking place compared to previous years. Uh, last week, I dug into that a little bit more and showed some uh, graphs about transaction numbers and where we're trending compared to past years. So check out last Monday's video if you want some more information about that. So every city, I know you guys love this chart. Um, this is showing every major city within the Phoenix area and what their CMI is. And when we look at the average change month over month this week, we saw an increase just by a slight amount. So uh, every week we're looking at the month over month change of all of these cities and the average has been a negative average for the last month or so. Um, last week we saw negative 5.9%, this week negative 6%, um, so just a bit more negative than last week, but still trending in that direction where um, we're seeing deterioration for sellers. Uh, I say this every week, but if you're new here, those red arrows mean that is negative for sellers. Sellers lost ground in those markets, and then um, the green arrows mean that it's positive for sellers. So all of this is based on a seller's perspective, and it's really just um, the type of leverage that they have, how strong the seller's market is in those areas. Um, there's only four cities that continue to show a positive change uh, from this time last month, um, which are those green arrows. So that's Chandler, Scottsdale, Surprise, and Buckeye. Uh, Buckeye's been really strong lately. Um, and then one is unchanged, which is Cave Creek, and there's 12 that show a negative trend for sellers, in particular Tempe, Fountain Hills, Avondale, Glendale, and Peoria have had the largest uh, negative change month over month. Um, so if you're in any of those cities, whether you're a buyer or a seller, take that as you will. It may help you um, if you're thinking about listing your home or if you are uh, trying to purchase a home, uh, kind of understanding what type of leverage you have. So let's talk about everything that has been going down. In July, and I'm sorry this is huge, but this is the best way for me to show you, and I will scroll accordingly so my face is out of the way. Um, this is the uh, affidavits of value from July of this year. Um, there were 6,081 closed transactions with a median sales price of 464,990. So that's good to know where we're at in terms of sales price um, in July. But closings were down 15% from July of last year and down 20% from June of 2023. 
Um, so last July, transactions really took a dip too because that's when we saw a large number of supply and buyers got very cold feet and demand fell off. So we're still down 15% from even what we saw last year and then 20% from the previous month. Median sales price is also down 2.1% from a year ago, down 1.3% from last month. 2.1% from a year ago is not a lot though. We got to think about how um, prices were still kind of at their peak last year. Um, it was after July where we saw prices go down significantly. So this is showing that um, there's been a big price recovery and we're fairly close to where we were at last year um, at that peak. Median sales price has fallen for the first time since January. It's now up 5.7% from the low point of January 2023. So it's increased, but it's the first time that we've seen a decrease this year. Every month we've been increasing our uh, median prices. And if you want to see some graphs on that, I do have a previous video about where sales prices are at in Phoenix that I posted a couple weeks back. So that might be a good one for you to check out. Um, New home closings totaled 1,352 with a median sales price of 533, an all-time record high price. So what you'll notice is everything in the resale market is down, but almost everything in the new home market is up. We're seeing a very different trend there. New home closed sales count was up 7.6% from July of last year, down 18.4% from June of 2023. So that's still down, but year over year, the number of sales is increasing or has increased. The new home median sales price is up 3.2% from a year ago and up 2.8% from last month. Um, resale transaction count, 4,729 and a median sales price of 445. So uh, resales, that median is 445. Overall, the median is 464. Uh, resale count was down 20% from July of 2022, down 21% from June of 2023. Uh, resale median sales price was down 4.1% from last year and down 0.5% from last month. So it's always interesting to see when you break up the resale versus new home. And um, typically, new builds, the prices are always higher. Um, but then in terms of transactions, that number is typically a little bit lower. Um, and the growth numbers and that kind of thing is just not quite as rapid as what you see in resale. And now we're seeing a difference in those two. Um, but it's great to see the difference in median price from resale, median price for um, new construction, and kind of give you an idea of where we're at with that. Um, Cromford closes this by saying, close tr transaction counts remain very weak for resales with both supply and demand in poor shape. Closing counts were much stronger in the new home market, up almost 8% from this time last year. Pricing was also higher for new builds than a year ago. Resale pricing paused in July, but still looks likely to overtake last year's pricing during the next three months. So we'll see if they are correct with that prediction. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I want you to comment below. Let me know where are we headed right now with all of this slowdown? Do you think we're just going to coast for the rest of the year? Or do you think we are on the cusp of things going down even further as we enter the fall? Comment below and let me know. If you guys have any questions, check the description. I have a link where you can reach out to my team directly, set up a call, just a discovery call if you want to talk about your options as a buyer, seller, or investor. And you can also check your house for an instant home value. You can check the MLS to search for homes in the Phoenix area as well. All those goodies are down in the description. So thank you for joining me, you guys, today. And I will see you later this week with some more data about the real estate market. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team.